All right, well, it's about 8 a.m. and I figure it's a great day for another project because I got a pretty good chunk of time I can spend on it today. We did a poll a while back in one of the videos. You might have missed it. It was at the end and it was, which project do you want me to do next? The response was overwhelmingly make a boomerang and I've never made a boomerang before so we're just gonna do that for the first time in this video and we'll see how it flies. Hopefully it flies. So we're gonna theme it up. Uh, we'll use the Wind Waker theme. And in this video, I figured we'd uh, just start from all the way at the beginning with the template. I'll show you how I make those. Some of you have asked, how do you make these templates? You know, and if you've seen my other videos, in the description there'll be a link on a printable template that you can make shields or swords or things like that. So we're gonna jump onto the computer and I'll give you a tutorial. I use Adobe Illustrator. I've used it for years, it's an awesome tool and I definitely recommend if you're into this at all, that you'd learn it, and it's it's not that hard. So let me hook up the mic and everything on the computer, and I'll give you a short tutorial. It's not gonna be that in depth, but it'll give you an idea of how the tool works, how to use it, and we'll probably come back to it later and use it um, in another video. Okay, so we'll pull up a screenshot, and this is what we're gonna make. This is taken from the game itself, and it's best to do that because if you go from maybe a poster or some promotional artwork, that's often different than what you actually see in the game. So if you want it to be really accurate, um, try to get it from the actual game itself. Uh, what else? Oh, this, let me show you some other angles while it's turning here. This would never fly. So the other uh, thing you have to think about is if you want this to be functional, you need to uh, stick to the principles of what makes a boomerang fly. And this would, would never return to you on that shape. So. You can make one that's accurate to the game, and that's a neat prop, but I want to make one that would probably come back to us. So that's what we're going to do. Let me plug in a mic and we'll do the screen record so it looks a little bit better than this. So I got the headset on and we're ready to go. Let's go down to Illustrator. This is CS3. And you can see right here, this is uh, Illustrator 13. So it's kind of an old version, but it works just fine. I'm going to hit print document. CS, uh, CS3 means Creative Suite 3. That is Adobe's package bundle of software. It includes Photoshop and other programs like that. Uh, most of you are going to be familiar with these settings. You can pick your paper size. You can pick your color mode. This is for, you know, if it's going to just stay on the screen, if it's going to be for, uh, you know, web design or something just online or video you do this if you're going to print it you'd use CMYK and you can change these anytime you want so it doesn't really matter right now all right so we have our page here there's the tools on this left column you have your um, selection tool this is your point tool or let's see they're going to label them selection tool direct selection tool so you can select what points you want specifically instead of the whole object magic wand I'm not going to go over everything here just what um, we need w while we're designing this and then I'll just kind of build it up on and teach more things on future videos I, I don't want to uh, make this video too long explaining everything because there's a lot of stuff and a lot of it I don't know so I just dragged on the picture here you don't have to do anything complicated see that just drag it onto the palette onto your canvas I mean so I zoomed out and here's the image I'm using this black pointer tool and you can move around everything with that if you want to move the page around and see what it looks like in other spots of your artwork you hold down the space bar and you can see it turns into this little hand tool so I'm going to make this smaller. Well, actually, I don't really need to. You see this black square right here? This is the paper. So that's this. this is literally the size of a sheet of paper. If I print it, whatever fits in here is going to print. Anything outside that square is not going to print. And so the black square will not print, actually, either, the rectangle. So I'm going to hit Command Plus, and that zooms in. I'm going to go over to this Layers palette. It's right here can see these layers and I'm gonna lock this image down like that if you just click this little square you see a little padlock show up and now I can't move this you see the little nope sign across the pencil I can't edit this because it's locked so if I wanna unlock it I can move this image around 
Pretty easy. So let's uh, lock that. Actually, we need to straighten this out a little bit. It might make it easier when we're tracing it. So let's create another layer as well. And I am going to put some guides in here. Let's center this and zoom in. If you hit Command-0, it's going to fill up the whole screen with your page. So nothing's left off. But I like to back it up just a little bit. OK. So let's rotate this image. I'm going to get the rulers out. So Command-R. And you can see these are in inches. You can see right here is 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch. If I click and drag down, it's going to make a guide, a blue line that won't print. You don't have to worry about those printing. But it helps me line things up. So now that guide's there. And I can hit R. Let me select this image here and hit R. Now I can rotate it. Let me zoom out and show you. Oh, we locked it. There we go. Select the image, hit R, and I can spin the image here and rotate it so that it is a little more symmetrical. Not just all screwy. Zoom back in. Okay, so I'm going to line up the bottom points of the boomerang on the guide. You can use your arrow keys. If I take, where is it? Let's go back to the rotate tool. Where is the center? Here's the center of the image. If I take that center, drag it right there, it will pivot on this axis now, not the middle of the image. So I can rotate it by dragging this down and it will pivot right here. So this looks a little bit off. There we go. That's lined up enough for me. Let's find the center. I'm going to drag a ruler from this side right about there. And it's not totally symmetrical because this is just a screenshot, but this is good enough for me. All right, so let's lock this layer again. And now we're working on layer two, which is going to be our image. Um, just so you can see things better, let me get rid of some of this image. I'm going to go on Transparency, and yeah, this is this image selected? Let me select it. Let's go to 50%. There we go, just so it's a bit muted. And you can see what I'm drawing a little better, so I go back and lock that. Select Layer 2, and we can start drawing. <clears throat> okay, so this boomerang is going to be adjusted for to conform to a real boomerang, but I'm going to draw it as it appears here first. So let's do the yellow. I'm not going to keep these angles so sharp. We'll adhere to them roughly. Okay, and I'm using this vector tool here. Let's see, it probably is going to go... Mm, We'll just stop right here. Um, this is the one tool that frustrates people in Illustrator, and they don't get how to work with this tool. And it's really just a matter of messing around with it. So you have a point here and a point here. And if you don't move your mouse, it's just going to do straight lines. Okay. But if I click and hold down right now and pull it, you see those little handles that come out? that alters the shape of the line. If it's close, it's a tight curve. If it's long, it's going to extend the curve. And if you just mess around with it, you'll understand how to make these work really easy. But there's really no other way to learn this other than just get in it and do it. I'll hit Z. We'll get rid of all those. So really, we just need to draw half of this boomerang, and then we can flip it and go to the other half. Uh, I want to get rid of this point here. Uh, well, I mean, boy, there's... Let me not get rid of the point, but get rid of the handle. If I click here, it's going to not make a straight line. It's going to make a curved line because of that handle. Watch this. See, that? I don't want that. So I'll hit Command, Command Z. If I click this again, it's going to get rid of that handle and now make a straight line. So now we can go to about here 
and try to match the image we see. This almost looks straight. Okay, and then we can go here. And that's too much of a curve. It's going to have a point there in the middle, so we need to get rid of that arc. It's too high. Let's go maybe something like that. Okay, that looks good enough for me. Let's draw this piece here. Should we keep it all? I, I don't want it all horrible like that. That won't look good. Let's make it curved. So somewhere right about there. And then come back to here. And then I need to close this and meet it up. So that's not a good symmetrical piece but we can mess with it I'm gonna decrease this handle like that try to make these match up a little bit better that's looking better I don't want this to pop out so much let's put it in a little tighter and now that means these have to be a little tighter let's get this other handle here and maybe bring it in tighter like that it's looking good. What do you think? Something's wrong. It's bulging out the bottom a little too much. And on this side a little too much. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's give this a little bit softer curve there. I think we'll keep the point. Okay, I like that. Now let's just do the rest of the design. So I'm going to lock this layer, hit the padlock, hit this, it'll make another layer, layer three. And this is in the way now, so I'm going to get rid of it by hitting this eyeball and that made it disappear so now I can draw the other parts okay there's some sort of like rivet there so let's hit our circle tool these are all your shapes if I hold it down it changes and shows you the rest of the menu and I hit ellipse now if I don't hit shift it's gonna make an oval but I want it to be a perfect circle so I'm gonna go to the top here hit shift and it's gonna lock it Something like that. All right, and we can do that with this as well. Do you think this is probably another circle? Almost looks like an oval, but it could be just the angle that the screenshot was taken at during the game. A little bit bigger than that. A little bit smaller. Something like that. Okay. Now I have the pen tool again, and we're going to design this. Let's see. It looks like a softer curve there, so I'm going to hit a straight line to there. Now I'm holding it down. I'm going to have the handles come out. Go a little bit there. Looks like it goes to here, and then maybe up just a tiny bit. Okay. And we'll go back to this line. Now I need to continue from this line, not this one. So I'm going to hit this uh, anchor point. And let's see, it looks like a bulge. And I want a pretty straight line. So got rid of the handles there. Just turning it. to match this shape. Now it's covering it up, so I'm going to get rid of the fill. That's these things here. You can see the stroke. That's the outside line. That's a black line in the back. And the fill is white. 
If I go under here and hit that, it gets rid of it. Okay, so let's continue. Looks like something like that. Now this is going to be too sharp of a turn. I'll just come and, and fix it later. There we go. Now let's fix it. So I'm going to go to this tool down here. We're going to decrease this handle. Yeah, this anchor point's in a little bit of the wrong spot. So let's bring it here. That looks a lot closer to what we want. This is one of those things that just a bit of practice is really required. It's not something you can just see and do. It's a tool that you have to become accustomed to and used to it. You know, like somebody can tell you how to ride a bike, but until you're on it, it really doesn't do you any good. It's just getting used to it. Okay, something like this. Let's keep that straight and maybe bulge it out a bit. Just a tiny bit there. Um, we can't make this a closed. Let's add an anchor point. I'm going to go to the pen, hold it down. You see this little plus sign there? Let's add a point right there. And let's finish this up. Let's go back to the pen. Okay, this is very off center. So we're going to have to play around with this a bit. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? Um, let's just select those points, copy, paste, get rid of these, delete, delete. So we got that swirl, and I can just get rid of these, and then bring this swirl separate. This is probably not going to make too much sense to you. So I have this line I drew and this line I drew and I want this all to be one shape. So you can see right here this anchor point and this anchor point. I want to join those two. So I'm going to take this one and it's going to like a little magnet click onto the other anchor point. So those are right on top of each other. I'm selecting both and I'm going to hit command J and it, now it joined the two. So this is one continuous line. So I can take this whole thing here. Let me put this back. And let's just turn on, I think we drew the whole thing actually. Oh, not this little rivet. Oh, I'm holding down Option, and you can duplicate things by holding down the Option key when you move it. Um, somewhere about right there. Okay, so that's it. That's the whole boomerang. And I am sorry if this is boring, because this is... it's When I draw, I go into a part of my brain where it's not easy for me to talk at the same time. It's not my nature uh, to be able to do this. So we're going to go turn on this layer. Now you have the whole image. So you've got the background, and they are in layers too. So there's what we drew last, and then underneath that is this part of the boomerang, and under that is the image. Let's turn off the image, just keep it clean here. And let's give it a fill so you can see what's filled up. How about that? So I'm going to select the boomerang, the yellow part. Let's turn it yellow. If I double click the white, we can go over to the color palette. There we go, yellow. 
and this is gray so we'll just come down here just a light gray this was a darker gray and let's use the uh, where is it eyedrop tool and so whatever selected it's going to copy those attributes. So if I hit that, it's going to take these attributes. It's going to make it this color. It's going to make it this color. It'll just copy everything that you click. So it changed this to gray. We need this to be gray as well, but we want it this color. Now our circle disappeared. That's because this shape is above the other one. So we're going to set it backwards. There we go. I hit command and then uh, the little bracket. What is that thing even called? the bracket key, it moves it up and down, or you can come up in the menu and do it. Okay, this is looking good. Um, what else? Let's copy this over now. So if I select everything, some of these have a green outline and that's just to let you know what layer it's on. You see this green thing here tells you it's on this green layer 3. Everything on layer 3 is going to have these um, green reference points. Everything on layer 2, you can see the yellow has the red one. So now I'm going to copy this and paste it. And you can see everything went to this layer. Let's hit the reflection tool so we can have the mirror image of this. It's right there. I'm going to hold down and spin it but this is just kind of free floaty reflection. I want it at exact. So I don't want this at a different angle. I want it lined up exactly the way that this one is. So I'm hitting shift. So if I hold down the shift, it keeps it lined up. I'm going to hit A to go back to this tool. And I can take this anchor point, bring it to this anchor point. You see the triangle there turns white and that lets me know that it's locked in. Great, so now let's join this boomerang and make it one shape. I'm going to select these two anchor points, hit J for join. And now it's joined up except for these down there, so I join that. Now this triangle is one complete shape all the way around. Everything's linked. So let's put that on its own layer. I'll drag it down here. Come on. Why isn't this going? There we go. I had no idea why I was doing that. Okay, so this layer here, the dark blue one, is the yellow part of the boomerang. Now we need to join this together. You can see it's, it's zoom in. Let me lock the yellow part. Okay, so I'm going to select here, which is two anchor points. Hit J for join. Done. These two anchor points, J, join. Done. So now I want to knock out this hole in the middle because this metal piece has a hole in it, so we need to knock out a hole in this shape. Um, let's send this to the back so we can see both sides of this knockout. There we go, and we can lock this, uh, lock this piece if we want. But select those two points. Hit J for join. And this is not really. There we go. Let's lower this a bit, so it's a nicer curve. Object lock selection. All right. Selected the two points, J for join. Now we have a complete shape on top of another complete shape. I'm going to select them both. So here's this selected, and we're going to use this as a punch to knock out a hole in this image or this shape underneath it, which I just locked. So let me object, lock, whoops, unlock all. Here we go. So I'm selecting this and I want to knock out a hole in this. So I selected them both. I come over on the right to this tool here, Pathfinder. 
and this is the one I want. You can see subtract from shape area. So the shape on top is going to knock it out. So if I hit that, expand, there we go. That's done. So let's move this to the back so we can see other shapes. Now this is basically it. I think the whole boomerang is basically done. So what we need to do now is take the shape of a real boomerang and adapt this to that. Does that make sense? And then we can apply the image. Well, before we do that, let's take a look at our work. We'll turn on the background layer again. And you can see parts stick up here because this was never really lined up perfectly, but it's close enough. It's pretty good, I think. Um, let's unlock that. Let's select all. Obviously, it can't select the background image because it's locked. I'm going to zoom out. So I'm hitting Command minus. Let's move this down. And uh, you can also match colors. So let's do that right now. I'm going to go to the background image, select that. Well, let's go back to full opacity. Okay, so if I want to match this yellow, I can select the yellow, hit my eyedrop tool, and it's being crazy goofy. Why is that? Let's find out. Okay, I have no idea why it's doing this. Why would it do different crazy random colors? Can somebody answer that? Maybe if we rasterize this. Mm, let's just see what happens. Maybe it doesn't like that it's a linked image like that. Now let's select our pink boomerang. Hit the eyedrop tool. Yeah, for some reason, that's weird. You can see it gets the different colors here. I don't know why it did that. This looks like the truest yellow. So we'll take that one. Let's do the gray. That looks, you can tell, you can see how it goes light or dark. So I'm just trying to get an average. Does that look average? Something like that. This is a pretty average color there. There's not much shadow there. So let's stick with that one. And these rivets are interesting because they show up. Are they holes or they stick out? I don't know. Let's just select one of these. That's darker. Okay. Oh, this. Let's select the red here. And you can do interesting things if you wanted to do a gradient. I mean, this is not at all necessary for um, show options. Radial. There we go. So let's select RGB. I'm sorry, I'm just skimming through all of this. Oh, I should do it with swatches. Anyway, I don't want to get all super detailed with this. But you can see how all this works. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. You can make this totally look 3D in Illustrator, all kinds of things. It's really neat. I think we're getting close to done. Oh, let's match this one to this one. Okay, and I'll show you, you can change the way the line looks as well. Let's get rid of the background image now and look at what we drew. Let's get rid of the guide. We can select everything. Command A, put it in the middle. All right, that looks all right. Uh, if you want this line thicker, you can come up to stroke make it real thick, it kind of makes it more cartoony. Let's go to two, oops, two points, which is, uh, the points are the line thickness. Now this is, might look better on screen to have thicker lines, but not when you're using it as a template. So we'll go back to one. Let's put in a picture of an actual boomerang. 
and merge the two. Okay, this does not fit in our paper. So let's shrink it down a bit more. Let's lock that thing. Now let's just make this a little bit bigger. Align it up there. Line it up there. All right. So this is what we're dealing with. So if we want this to conform to the real boomerang, we just have to distort it a bit. And Illustrator is really good at distorting things. Let's make it match the width. Actually, before I distort it, let's make a copy of it. So I can always go back to the original copy. Okay, there we go. I'm holding down Option Shift and I can make a copy. Okay, so now I'm going to match the width here. That's too tall, so we're going to shrink it down this way. And we need to make these bigger. Let's make this transparent so I can see what we're dealing with. All right, if I want this to match up, we'll just take these points and extend them out. Now I'm just taking these anchor points and I'm going to move these around, and this will be very long and tedious and I don't think you want to watch all of this I'll probably have to edit this video down it'll just be way too long and boring but you're gonna just see me tweaking all these lines to get it to conform so we'll do this on a quicker speed and uh, then we'll jump back in at the end So that's it for now. It's mostly laid out. That line down the middle is just to help you line things up when you print this out because it's going to be on two sheets. But we'll take the headphones off and wrap up the video. Well, this should give you a little bit of an idea of how I make these templates and how Illustrator works. Just a taste. We'll come back to Illustrator and I'll show you some more projects. We'll make the templates on camera. Uh, but this is what we ended up with, what we left with. Both halves of the boomerang on one sheet. It just makes it easier for when you print it out. You just cut out the pieces, glue them together, and trace it onto your wood. Uh, next video, we'll get the wood and we'll actually build one and see if it flies. I don't have much hope that we'll get it in the air and have it come back because I had a boomerang as a kid and I could not get it to work. <laughs> but you never know. We'll see what happens. We'll try to make it fly anyway. Um, I'm sorry if this video felt kind of rushed. I've been trying to get this done in one day and edit it and up because my wife is five days past due her pregnancy. It's our sixth child that we're expecting and it's probably our last. So we're excited, but I anticipate that in the very near future, like maybe tomorrow, we'll be in the hospital there with our new child. And so I wanted to be able to get one video out uh, pretty quickly in case it's a, a while for the next one. But uh, yeah, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. We didn't uh, look on the ultrasound. But I wanted to read some viewer mails really quick and show some of these off. Uh, this first one is from Ivlin from Bulgaria. And he made a couple swords and also he made his own tools. So let's check out the swords first. Uh, this is his master sword and it came out really nice. Especially when you consider what tools he had to work with. So his solution for the handle on the master sword was to bolt it on. You can see there. And actually, he says he made his own wood lathe using a bolt and a drill. So that'd be cool to see a video of that. Uh, if you do it again, film it. And then lastly, here's his uh, World of Warcraft sword. You know, I have not played that, so I'm not familiar, but that does look really neat. Oh, and I almost forgot. Check out this uh, picture he sent. He made his own Dremel tool. He took a fan that, like, you would plug into a car, 
took the fan off and put on a smashed bottle cap where he cut some notches in the end for um, you know some blades and uh, he used that on his master sword. Is that cool or what? <laughs> Okay, this next one is from, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, Yaron. He says, Hi Adam, this is my process in making Lynx Hylian shield for my brother as a birthday gift. As you can see in the pictures, the shield looks different than yours. I followed your steps in the YouTube video and used your printable files, which were really helpful. The wood sanding was actually pretty hard. I used some kind of machine to help me, but it was still a tough job. I wanted to create this 3D effect around the edges like you but it came out a little bit different not that I really cared about it because I think this makes the shield unique I will start the painting and I'm thinking about first painting all the parts and then attaching them afterwards what are your thoughts on this and they actually sent some photos before I could read this so here's what it looks like painted when you paint it and then glue it on it just makes it so much easier it's just that you want to make sure that you're not gluing on paint. Maybe you have to rough up the paint underneath it so that the things bond. Or, but I think that's a great shield. It came out really well. I'm glad you made it for your brother. I really like it when you guys send me pictures and I can see what you guys did as well. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. We'll uh, do some bigger, exciting video next time. Uh, we hit 50,000 subscribers and I thank you guys so much. That's really uh, great that you guys are into this and sending these photos. It's neat to see what you guys make. I really do appreciate that. Um, I wanted to do some sort of neat giveaway or something at 50,000, but all of a sudden it kind of spiked and ramped up and it came a lot quicker than I was ready for. So I'm thinking of doing some retro project, something I did as a kid and we'll do it again. It'll have nothing to do with video games. It'll just be some uh, another simple little project. But that'll be after the boomerang. We'll do some giveaways and things like that. Oh, and before I forget, whoever uh, it was that submitted the uh, subtitles in Arabic, thank you so much. That was really, really nice of you to do that. Um, so I know it was a lot of work for you. And thanks for helping out and helping this channel grow. That'll do it, guys. I'll see you next time. And... Uh, Wish my wife luck on the new baby. We haven't picked out a name. This is our sixth, so we've used up any names that we've already had. It's going to be hard to, to think of one. If you have one that you really like, <laughs> go ahead and leave a message. And maybe we'll consider it if, uh, if we get it in time. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Take care, guys.